Boy, oh boy, do you ever have one of those days that's going to get off to a hell of a start? Well, this is going to be one of them. Hey, everybody, I'm Captain Tommy Scoville, and you are on the light bulb. Boy, I hit that, uh, I hit the countdown, and you hit the button while it's dropping and while the numbers are scrolling down, and uh, I hit it with about 20 seconds to go, and it usually takes about five seconds, 10 seconds to get over there, so you get a 15, 10-second countdown, something like that. That puppy just went around in circles. I think we got about a, a one and a half second countdown on that one. Hopefully that didn't bore you all. I'm Captain Tommy. Tommy, welcome to the boat. Listen, you know what? For a long time, we were, uh, we're we were without the cat cam. This is something that a lot of you were a little bummed out. <laughs> yes, you know what? I had the whole sh the fire hole shirt on earlier. Miss, you've managed. I just took it off. You know why I took it off? It was cold. It's uh, the temperature has dropped here. Hello, Kristen. Good to see you. Um, the temperature has dropped, but I got, if you've not seen the fire hole shirt, they're so fantastic with the fire hose shirts. <laughs> my, my, uh, my brother's got over on, uh, on Johnny scuffle.com to here's the funny thing about those shirts, right? This is no joke. We had the first conversation about that. Um, about, I'm not exaggerating three years ago, I sent him over an idea for a shirt and I was like, look at this. Why have we not done this as a shirt? Right. And he goes, you're right. It's perfect. And then he shot back the other one. I won't say which one I came up with and which one he came up with. But he fired back the other one and said, oh, man, look at this. And I said, oh, they're perfect, man. We, we need these things made now. Like, absolutely. And he said, yes, this is going to be done. Let's get it done right now. Fast forward three years and a couple of weeks. And here they are. Um, the uh, the fire hole and the fire hose shirt are there. And uh and they are funny as hell. I'm definitely going to be rocking both of them. If you are any kind of a chili head, a guy chili head, obviously one of those is really, really for you. But um, so hand on the blind kitty. Good to see you, Virginia. Glad you're here. Lord Kiss Freak, Flamin' Jackson, Mile High Hokey, ASAP. Lizzie, glad you're here. Sydney Plumley, Charlie, Murphy. Charlie, I have never missed a comment. Murphy, Jen Marie. I just did my first investigative live stream today and I'm still shaking. Woohoo! You know what? I got a cool story to tell you about that one in a minute. I mean, a really cool story. Tina Marie, how are you? Good to see you. You'll notice my hat is not gray anymore. Sits a little different on the uh, head. Had the kid over today because he had to do some stuff. You'll notice that the squirrel is in the top left-hand corner. That is squirrel. Chilling like a villain. Spence Calhoun came up and got everything wired up and uh, was over here. He also thefted his hat back. And that's the problem. If you film a video wearing your hats, your uh, your son's stolen hat, there's a good chance he's going to notice that you stole it. Thank you, Sandy Wandy. Uh, I've had this one a really long time. I've had this one a really long time. Uh, but I busted it back out on account of the fact that Spence Calhoun is a thief and has stolen back the hat I stole from him. A little bummed out about that. Always have loved referring to these as chapeaus. Um, there was that. There was a cat in a hat. There was a cat in a hat, I think, was the first time I heard that. They did a, a cartoon in the in the 70s. Maybe it was the 80s. But they were. it was a cat in a hat singing. And he was singing, cat in the hat, in French, chap chapeau. In Spanish, amagato. In a sombrero. Yeah, chapeau. I believe I heard that the first time there. But thank you for a trip down memory lane. Very Indiana Jones. You know what? It's got a little Indiana Jones to it. I'm not going to lie to you. It absolutely has a little bit of uh, no honor amongst thieves. Queen of awkwardness, I'm telling you, right? Yeah, he, uh, no honor among thieves. But look at this. Is this great or what? Now, this spoiled little animal will be on uh, on camera 24. Well, maybe not 24-7. You know the problem? I'd like to keep her on there all the time so that you could watch her sleep and all that. That doesn't happen. The second I get up and stop talking, this cat follows me wherever I go and uh, drops in usually either like right underneath an arm 
If your arm is this way, the cat's going to be right here. If not, she's going to get behind your knee. But uh, squirrel wants about almost 230 degrees of body contact. He would like her body, you know, all the way curled up as much as possible to suck as much body heat off of you as she possibly can. Uh, yeah, uh, one of one of the greatest creatures ever created in terms of just absolutely um, wanting nothing more than her own comfort. And there's something so uh, refreshing about looking down at an animal that's just, you know what, this is about my comfort. I want exactly what is uh, best for me. I'm not really concerned at the moment anything about you. I want what's best for me. There's no, uh, there's no BS to it. There's something so lovely and honest about it. However, <clears throat> Johnny's been doing a bunch of, uh, of research because he does these um, while he rides his bike. He does these uh, like top 20 facts kinds of thing. And he was talking about how a, uh, a cat will catch an animal and kill it, a bird, a, you know, whatever. They bring it to you as a tribute, right? They, and they also bring it to you as their way of saying, by the way, I'm here trying to provide for the family as well, which I think is just, honestly, I heard, uh, I heard that on, uh, on, jo on Johnny's channel and I thought, you know what? I love that. So when, when Squirrel takes out a mouse and drops it off for me, it's not the, look, look, I'm cleaning the place up. It's, I realize you've spent thousands of dollars on cat food, litter, you know, toys, um, drugs, because the cat's got a habit, you know, um, so here's a mouse. I'm doing my part. I think that is absolutely the funniest. <laughs> well, well, we are. You, you may <laughs> you may have stumbled onto something here, Kristen. <laughs> you, you may be onto something. And it is a gift. No, it is absolutely a gift, Rachel F. That is that's a true thing. But the other is it also they want to help provide for their part of the family. So thank you for the 4,000 pounds of kibble you've paid for and more treats than any cat on planet Earth has ever consumed. I mean, this animal is spoiled in a level that I'm almost a little ashamed of. I'm not joking. Like I'm, hey, Shag Nasty, good to see you. Cindy Plumley, good to see you. Jen Marie, glad that you're here. Virginia, how are you? Awaken through the looking glass reflection. Can't reach out, but you can listen. Well, then, hello. Good to see you. We love you. Katrina, how are you? Anique Alexander is here. Razzy Girl. Janet G. Marissa Robertson. Stacey Sullivan. Oh, wow. Stacy says, Tommy and cats are exactly what I need tonight. Have a biopsy tomorrow. Had breast cancer in 2012. Uh, and I've been fine since, but this year my mammo was off. I'm terrified and I need some good vibes. You know what? Good vibes are exactly what you need. And, and there you go. That's for you. Stacy. I am famous. I've talked about this on the show so many times. I'm famous. The term is not used anymore. In fact, it's, it's dead in, uh, in our society. But the term is hanging crepe, right? It, it, it used to mean that we absolutely thought the worst always. Um, I have had a lot of medical problems um, recently. And every time something comes up and I get contacted or I have to go see a doctor or whatever, I have the potential to go to the worst possible case scenario. And it is my DNA. It is so deeply embedded in who I am, right? My, my favorite example is the one that I talk about because it has nothing to do with, with medicine, but the was it the probation officer. I got a letter on friggin' Friday and I didn't get home until it was the end of the day. So I go and I get the mail and it says, you need to get into my office as soon as you possibly can. First day after you get this, be at my office when the uh, office opens. I need to see you. Oh. Now, no joke, right? I'm I'm at the uh, I'm at the house and I sit down right. This, I forget this like, man. This is yesterday. I sat down at the kitchen table and I went, "They're going to send me back to prison, right? They're going to send me back to prison, which is impossible." Don in Wyoming, thank you so much. I miss Don. Don in Wyoming, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. 
You have a seriously spoiled English bulldog. <laughs> uh, well, this cat takes the, uh, the the cake because not only do I spoil this cat, but half of you do. So this is a spoiled, really spoiled cat. And Ms. Lady Hummingbird, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Yahusha's disciple. It is so good to see you in here. Much love for you. Really huge love for you. And always, always an honor and always a uh, a pleasure to uh, to see you. You know, it is. It is always a pleasure to um, to see you, truthfully. Uh, Calhoun, I have no idea what I was talking about. Do you remember by any chance? Probably not. I mean, it doesn't matter much because we can we can take this in uh, in any general direction that we uh, that we take this in. Um, she probably had something to do with uh, with the cat, but oh no, you know what it had to do with? It had to do with this. I uh, I was telling the story about my probation officer, and I got this letter, and so all day Saturday and all day Sunday, right? I sat and I thought about why what could they be sending me back to prison for? Because that's what a probation officer calls you for. And when he says, come down to the office, now, you know what? If he was sending me to prison, he's not calling me down to the office. I'm going to get a knock on the door. It's going to go something like this. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Oh, good. How are you? Excellent. Open the door. Just wanted to talk to you for a second. Then you open the door and there's 45 guys there waiting. And they bum rush you, tackle you. I've had it done. Right? But it's so logical. I put the worst possible case scenario. Why? Because it's what we do. Right? We go to the worst possible case scenario. It's a, it's it's just a habit. Thank you, Izzy. Really appreciate you. It's a horrific habit, but it's one that we all do. So all I'm saying is that I have made a conscious effort, and I'm not very good at it. Don't 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 pat me on the back. But I have made a conscious effort to try to always defer to the best case scenario, right? So using that example. And I didn't do it, by the way. I, I, I screwed that one up so badly. But I came and talked about it, and I think I've learned from it. But now, in the same situation, right, my, the best response would have been this. You know what? I'm coming up on that one-and-a-half-year mark, man. Right? I'm coming up on that. Maybe they're kicking me off. Maybe I'm going to go down to this dude's office, and he's going to go, hey, Tommy, you've done everything right. You got the lifeboat. You're not getting high. You passed every single one of your drug tests. You never pay, missed paying any fines. You're gone. You're kicked off paper. That's not where my head went. It should have been. I hadn't done a damn thing wrong. I hadn't missed a drug class, right? I went to all of them in the beginning. I had a psychiatrist and a psychologist that I was seeing, and they told me I didn't have to anymore, so I was paying out of pocket, seeing both of them. They wanted me to do a couple of meetings. I'm doing the lifeboat twice a day at a minimum. I thought the first thought should have been, they're going to kick me off, man. For real. The judge took a look at this and finally went, what the hell is this guy on paper for, man? For real. Why are we wasting time babysitting a guy that's got no chance of doing something stupid? I've done nothing wrong. That should have been the first thought. The first thought was, they're locking my ass up on Monday morning. When I walk into that building, they're going to put handcuffs on me. They're going to say, turn around, put your hands behind your back. I've heard it so many times, man. Turn around, put your hand behind your back. You got anything in your pocket that's going to stick me, stab me, hurt me, anything like that? Okay, great. Spread your legs a little bit. Then no matter how much you spread your legs, they're going to kick the inside of your ankle to get you to spread your legs farther. I always try to do it because I've been down this road so many times. I like to try to look like I'm doing the splits in gymnastics. Like I want to make the guy feel like an ignoramus if he tries to tap my legs wider. Like anyone watching is going to go, what? what What's that dude doing with his boot, right? Like my legs are like this, you know? But that's what I expected to hear. And I should have expected to hear. You're done, man. Well done. Great job. You killed it. Now, it's a little bit different, right? It's a little bit different when it's something medical, right? Sorry. Ah, oh, Jason P. I appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate that. It, when it's medical, <clears throat> I do the same thing. And now I've got so many medical things going on that I get contacted by a doctor twice a week, right? That's just part of my life. It's probably going to be for a hot minute, but I'm getting good. I'm getting good at, at trying to keep things in perspective. If a doctor calls me, it's probably because they need to reschedule my appointment. 
It's probably not because somehow magically since the last time I saw him, they figured out something that's going to take me off the planet in the next 15 minutes. Probably not the case. Probably has something to do with the fact that, you know, or I didn't give him my insurance card or something like that, right? To your grandson, Maxwell? Well, hello, Maxwell. One of my favorite names, too. True story. I was a, uh, I was a really big Get Smart fan, if you guys remember that show. Uh, show that came out in the, uh, came out in the, uh, I think, 70s. Might have been late 60s, early 70s. It was a spoof on the James Bond genre of... Uh, of um you know like uh the the undercover spy and maxwell smart was a uh, was the spy and he was absolutely awesome one of my favorite shows one of my dad's too and uh and my uncles we used to uh growing up it was one of those things that when it came on it was an event the cone of silence thank you the tree hugging buddhist in fact all we had to do right up until the last day that papa scoville was alive all we had to do was say the cone of silence and he would burst into laughter like it was the first time he had seen it. If you've not, if you're not familiar with this show, right, you, you can find this all over the place. They run all the seasons. Uh, you got to keep in mind, this was long before anyone had ever thought of a cell phone. This was a concept that nobody had ever thought of. So he had a phone in his shoe. Yet, I'm telling you, if you've never seen Get Smart, Go and watch it. You're going to thank me. But even better, in the very beginning, he pulls up in a car called a Sunbeam. Now, they changed it from one season to the next, but originally he starts out in a red Sunbeam. Very, very unusual car. Looks like an MG, but it has fins. And I bought that car. When Spanx Calhoun was a kid, I owned it. And I bought that car because of Get Smart. I promise you, for no other reason. Like, I saw it for sale, and I was like, good Lord in heaven, I got a shot at owning the... Uh, Agent 99? No, Agent 99 was beautiful. Uh, what was her name? Someone's going to say it before I do. Uh, Barbara Feldman. I don't think anybody beat me to that. Did anybody beat me to that, Calhoun? You see Barbara Feldman's name up there anywhere? I'm pretty sure it's Barbara Feldman. Somebody check that out and see if 99 was played by Barbara Feldman. Of course, he was Agent 89, right? Which was always... Uh, Barbara Feldman, thank you. Look at that. Do you see that, people? Look. Do you see that? Uh, uh. That's the dome piece still working, Spanx Calhoun. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. See that, people? That's me looking on the bright side. Did you see how I pulled that out? Huh? Like that. Like that. I'm telling you. it's um, Tree Hugger was close. Good. Good to know. Good to, good to know. I won with, uh, with a slightly diminished. You have an Easter egg for me on the wall behind you, Miles. Nice. I have a uh, I have a very cool collection of what look like Fabergé eggs, but they are carved um, Alice in Wonderland. All of the characters of Alice in Wonderland, um, and I bought them long, long, long ago. But I uh, still have them in the box because I'm a freak about Alice in Wonderland. So. You love it when there's '70s and '80s TV talk. Well, it's hard to go wrong, isn't it? Because it's just so much fun. You know what happened, people? What happened is television evolved, right? And sadly, it's dead. As a forum, it really is dead. And the crazy thing is, I think if they were to go back, Tina Marie, thank you so much. I truthfully believe if they were to go back and start making stuff the way they used to, they could save it. But TV is dying. And the fact that there are people watching me talk right now is proof of that. There are 60 million channels out there today, right? I don't know how many of them are going live, but if they got a couple of hundred people watching every one of them, we're doing some serious damage. Oh, uh, you know what? JJ Bird. So Taxi was made by um, James Burroughs, right? James Charles Burroughs. Burroughs Charles Burroughs was the name of the production company. James Burroughs was one of the uh, three people that made it. He also was the person who bought my home in in uh, my my ancestral home. The, uh, the house that I grew up in was purchased by the guy that made Taxi. But I remember being um, 
in New York and going across the bridge that they filmed. Remember that first opening scene and they're going across the bridge and you can hear the of the tires and they start playing that do 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 how that very very catchy tune. My father was the greatest whistler you ever met. I don't know if he ever did it on um on um my brother's channel, probably at some point, because he just was, he was gifted. He could, uh, he could whistle anything. He had a, an, an ear and about 50 different whistling sounds that he could do. It was very, very, I don't know. He just really had it down. Right. Uh, but I remember going across that bridge with him and we were in a yellow cab and I started looking and he could tell as I was looking around that I was putting this together, like that I was realizing in my head exactly where we were, and right as I did, he started to whistle the uh, the theme song from uh, from Taxi, and it's just one of those uh, one of those moments that's etched in my head because it was like we communicated without anybody saying a word. I looked around real quick, like holy crap, and he thought, "Ah, I'll fill it in for you." Here you go, little 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 Taxi. Um, but yeah, I was a huge fan of that show. Really, really big fan of the uh, the TV show Taxi. And to be honest, all of the people that did that, I mean, the, the Burroughs, uh, Charles Burroughs did Taxi, they did Barney Miller, they did Cheers, they did Friends, like that, that was a production company that kicked the hell out of about 20 or 30 years. I mean, for real, the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, they owned it. They owned it. Yeah. How many cop shows can you watch? Uh, NCIS, Blue Bloods, etc. I watch YouTube most of the time because I can't stand 10 minutes of commercials. I get it. I do. I get it. Dennis, I did. And it's a bummer because those kind of shows used to be really a lot of fun for me. Um, the other thing is that it has become, right? It has also become a very big thing. Aww. Uh, and Hummingbird, thank you. And you know what? Thank you for being a part of this boat. For real. Thank you for being a part of this channel. And thank you to everybody on this channel that puts up with the BS. You can't have a family on YouTube without a little BS. <laughs> Sadly. Um, now, we're going to get better, right? I'm, I'm bad at this YouTube thing. Now, before anybody goes, oh, no, no, Tommy, listen, I'm comfortable as hell sitting in front of this microphone. And I'm not bagging on myself for that. I do a good show. I do. I'm proud as hell of the show I do. But the rest of it, the, the nuances, the figuring out the relationships between, uh, you know, creators and and doing all the stuff that YouTubers do, right? Like, and, and almost do, uh, you know, I definitely have to think about and I have to learn about. But we uh, we had some uh, we had some tough times and it, and it threatened some of the greatest people on this boat. And I'm glad that that calmer has prevailed, right? So big shout out to Ann Hummingbird. Thank you so much. Big shout out to Jen. Big shout out to Anik. Big shout out to everybody here that just every day works hard. Cosmic Kirsty Buster chops over on the um, on the platform whose name I block on every single time because it just Discord. Discord does not seem like a name that should be a server, right? <clears throat> In my life as a speaker, Discord doesn't get used very often, right? And when it does, like occasionally you'll use it as Discord between a few few people but normally it's like discord in the negative sense of the word of as in like sowing seeds thereof right so i don't know i have a mental block on the uh, on the word but she really busts her chops over on uh, on uh, discord and my and, and as a, my daughter speaks highly of. i say that a lot i know you're probably sick of hearing it but it's a huge deal my daughter is a great judge of character Do, 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 do. Yeah, JD just doesn't, it's not, it's not a great word. I wish they had come up with something different. The funny thing is that Discord doesn't need to, a good Discord, right? Like Discord is not a bad thing. It really isn't. But more often than not, it comes out looking like uh, seeds of Discord. It, 
it, it certainly doesn't have Cedar is uh, busy. He was a busy college student, but um, no, no, for real. I wouldn't, I uh, wouldn't lie to you. I would not lie to you. Oh, you know what? You know what? Sorry, but we're going there. It's, it's too soon. I know it's too soon because this happened in 19, what, 78? And I'm still a little bummed out about it. But that was a rugged episode. And, and it was a comedy channel. I mean, a comedy show. For those of us of a certain age, for those who remember, yeah, no, it's too late. Mischief Man and Sherry, it's, it's out of the bag. There's no putting this back in. We're talking about it. Yeah, we're talking about it. It uh, We just did not see that coming, especially as little kids, right? Because that kind of irony was lost on me as a kid. The fact that, that there was a ju juxtaposition of the war, those scene, those episodes didn't make a lot of sense to me. Do you understand what I mean? Like I watched MASH when I was a kid, but I didn't understand nuance. So I understood the comedy. I understood Klinger dressing up as a woman. I understood all of the things that were radar, walking in and knowing, knowing everything that was going to be happening before it happened. All of those things that were really great. But it was a comedy. I didn't understand the war part of it. it I was too young for uh, for any of that. But when uh, when the uh, he's taking off and you're like, oh, he's going home. You know what I mean? Like, how good is that? And then the cop goes down. Yeah, I remember really getting kicked in the stomach with that one. Like, I honestly remember that being one of those things where I was like, what kind of dirty SOB makes that? Right? You made that on purpose. I remember being a kid and like I understood, I was really coming of age where I understood the show concept. I was no longer watching a magic box that had people on it. I understood this was a concept that they make this show, right? And I was pissed. I'm not joking. I was unhappy. I was like, what kind of sick SOB made this? You just killed off one of the coolest characters ever. I learned after the fact. I probably would not have liked um, the King of Thrones. From my understanding, they kill off the main character like every 15 minutes. Every time you go, ooh, I like that guy, he's dead like two episodes later. I, I would have hated it. I don't know that I could have watched it. So, as it works out, um, I didn't have to. It, uh, You know what, Jess? There were there were five or six wildly poignant uh, moments in that show. But again, I didn't get them. Later on in life, I watched. So I always talk about how I never had a, 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 a television in prison because in the federal system, you do not get televisions in your cell. But I did a state bit. And I had a television set in my cell in the state. And the two shows that I watched the most were MASH and How It's Made. Those two shows, they one of the, the I could watch about three hours of MASH a day if I went between all of the networks. And then How It's Made, I could catch on two different uh, networks during the game as well. I mean, during the day. And those are the only things that I watched. But wa watching MASH as an older person is a very, very different thing. I, this kind of confession, this kind of confession, you're only going to get this on the lifeboat. I promise you on no other channel. Cause we don't judge anybody here, right? We don't about anything about drugs, about drug use, about alcoholism, about any of that, or of about still watching family ties. Yeah. We will not judge anybody for that. If you're still rocking out to family ties, there's nothing wrong with that. Hold on a second. She said she's still watching Family Ties. <laughs> All right, sorry. That was muted, yeah? No? I'm kidding. Family Ties is a great show, but I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, Bruce Cook, I one of the first really odd parent-teacher conferences I had. Uh, when Spanky Calhoun was a young boy, I had a teacher that called us in to uh, tell me that I was, uh, my son was reading in school instead of paying attention and it was really becoming an issue. And I said, 
What's he reading? And you would have thought, honestly, that I said, um, have you ever seen an alien? Do you know any by name? Like the look on this person's face, they went like a golden retriever, like the head went sideways. What, what difference does that make? I don't know. If he's reading the anarchist cookbook, I'd be a little bit more concerned than if he's reading, I don't know, say the cat in the hat, right? I think he was in second grade at the time or whatever. And the woman said, I'm going to go get the book. And I'm not kidding you, right? So the woman comes back and says, the Twin Towers. <laughs> and I said, my kid's reading the Twin Towers. And this is bumming people out at school. Well, he's reading it when he's supposed to be doing his work. I said, okay, he's done here. This isn't the school for, <laughs> for Spanky. This is probably not a great match. But um, yeah, Spanks was a fan of the um, Lord of the Trilogy rings at a very, very young age. In fact, would sometimes walk around the house reading the book while walking. Only kids do this. This is not something an adult would do. But Spanky would literally walk around with a book in his hand reading, which is a great way to run into things. Although I don't actually remember him running into things, but I do remember him walking around with a book. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Oh, you do? He does. Okay, good. Well, you never know. Spanky, what is your favorite book? You hear that? That teacher was mean, but on the bright side, I was very mean to that teacher too, which was uh, which was fun. All right, Spanky, favorite book. You're on the spot. What do you got? The sun did not shine. It was too wet to play, so we stayed in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. I sat there with Sally. I sat there with you, and I said, oh, I wish I had something to do. It's too wet to go out. It's too cold to play ball, and we sat in the house. We did nothing at all, and all we could do was to sit, 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 and I did not like it. Not one little bit. Oh, you lousy, no good cop out. He only wrote that because he's shoving food into his mouth with both hands. He looks like Aaron eating. I'm not kidding you. It's like he's going at it. Um, you know what's funny? This is really funny. Piano mom. A piano mom. You remember seeing Michael J. J. Fox around town, did you? Piano Mom, do me a favor and send me an email at sober at my yahoo.com uh, so that we can have a um, so that we can have a, a conversation, just a brief one. I would imagine that you and I know a lot of the same people. In fact, I'd go out on a limb and say I'd be shocked if you and I don't know each other. So it might be fun, Piano Mom. Drop me a uh, email at. Uh, Sober at myyahoo.com. You know, every once in a while you'll say something and I'll think, well, we're probably from the same part of the world, but at a very different time frame. But that one right there, he wasn't there very long. Michael J was at a, there was a really short period of time when Michael J. Fox was walking around that town. And uh, I happen to remember it. Yeah, he was a really good guy. He is a good guy. He's, uh, you know, this is a tough thing that he's going through, you know, Um I had the fortune of spending time with Muhammad Ali while he was alive. And he had Parkinson's syndrome, which is not exactly the same as Parkinson's disease, but the symptoms are, for all intents and purposes, the same. It's the same thing, but it's from getting too many shots to the head. You feel me? It's from bouncing, bouncing your head off of people's fists too much, off of the ground, off of whatever. But... Um, I think it is a, a misconception that when you see people start to do some of the, the affectations that happen from the, the Parkinson's, that we assume the person becomes stupid. We, we make, we make a, a, an assumption that the person is less intelligent because they used to look like this. And now Ali was a great example of that, right? He was as sharp as he was when I met him, I promise you, as he was when he was in his 20s. He said some of the funniest things I have ever, like, honestly, when I go back through my life, if my life were to flash before my eyes, two or three of the funniest things that ever happened were happened when Muhammad Ali said things. Really, really funny guy, super fast on his feet, uh, sharp, sharper than everybody that was around at the time. But when I would talk to people, they would always say things, you know, like, oh, man, you know, he can't, the guy can't speak. You know, he, he's, he, there's nothing upstairs. And I would go, oh man, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, it's, he definitely was shaking, but wow. Wow. 
My favorite book is still The Secret Garden, even though at 11, I read both Dianetics and Ordeal. Got a lot in trouble, uh, got in a lot of trouble for reading Ordeal on the school bus. Wow. Um, I know someone else whose favorite book is uh, still The Secret Garden. So I, uh, and it's somebody that I, I hold in high esteem. So you're in, uh, you're in good company. I know people who still love that book has a really seems to have an effect on a lot of people. Congratulations, Patty. Not sure what that is, but congratulations and welcome back to being you. Huh? 25 years. You know what? That's a good one. And the award goes to Patty. We're not sure, but not the same Patty we was yesterday. And for that, congratulations. Good for you. Feels like taking something back, doesn't it? Good on you. Good on you. I love it. I really do. I think that's so cool. I love it. I love it. Yeah, cool feeling, right? Very, very cool. No way. JD. Okay, now, this is the book that I read way younger than I should have. Not, not that it was a bad thing to read it that young, but I, I should not have been able to read it at the age I read it. This, is, this was the first book that I ever read that freaked people out. Like, I read A Wrinkle in Time and the people, um, it was one of those situations where people went, no, he didn't really read it. Like he kind of looked at it or whatever. And I was able to have a um, a, a sit down and a conversation about uh, a book, the A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, the second in the series was called A Swiftly Tilting Planet, I think. And I'm trying to remember what the story. Uh, but. John, uh, John James Wallace, John's Wallace, something Wallace was the uh, main character's name. Big book, big book for me. A Wrinkle in Time was a great, great book. A great Ma Madeline Engel. Did anybody beat me on that? John Wallace, thank you. Might have been John Wallace. Whatever it was, there was a Wallace in it. Madeline Engel won it. Uh, it was a um, won an award for it too. The the medallion thing. I don't remember what the award was. Lengel, there you go. Mad Madeline. You read The Exorcist, read The Exorcist when I was eight. Well, that explains a hell of a lot, Seven. I mean, that that, that just ironed it out, didn't it? We were a little fuzzy on this entire thing until then. Um, Lord of the Rings, uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogies, the books, they're, they're in every single, um, I honestly have never been in a prison where all of the books were not on the book cart. The Alchemist is a great book. I read it. Flowers in the Attic. I read great book. Um, Dean Koontz. I don't know if there's anything Dean Koontz wrote that I didn't uh, read. I, people, I, I, I had a lot of time to read. A lot of time to read. If you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want them to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. Attributed to Albert Einstein, though probably more than true. Yeah, I, you know, I I was a big fan of uh, of story time. Um, I was a big fan of reading to my kids, but but I don't know that I was trying to be a good dad or any of that. I think I just really dug it. Like that was my, you know, my Spanky, you know, in in particular because I I really raised Spanks, but he would get he would get so into the, into the stories that the looks on his face, like he was hanging on the next word to the point where I could mess with him viciously. Like if I did, if I, if I stopped down, like and started talking like this while he was leaning in and then I would go, and then, and he, and he would, you know, he would get airborne. It'd be like three, three feet of, it, of air between his butt and the, uh, in the chair. Like he, he got into it. He loved, he loved story time with the old man. We had a really good time with it. And I got, and I got into it. I loved reading to, uh, to my kid, but, a lot of the stories that I read to him were stories I still grooved to. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, to read stuff that I like. Lord of the Flies jacked me up. Lord of the Flies is a tough book, man. Lonesome Dove, Jill Judd. 
Woo! Lonesome, lonesome uh, doves. This is, uh, this is tough. Tough. You know what? Here's something that is really something to be said for reading versus seeing. Because I'll tell you something. That character in the book is way scarier than that character is in the movie. And the character in the movie is scary. Like, I mean, don't get it messed up. That That's a scare. They did it really well. But you just, Stephen King can take 14 pages, right, to to scare you in what, in a movie, they don't have that kind of time to work with. They Our attention span, they know is this big. So they only give us like 10 seconds, right, at a, at a, at a, uh, at a spot. As a uh, retired librarian, I applaud that you loved reading to your kids. Yay, you. You know what? You had to know Spanky. There is, I'm telling you, don't give me the father of, year, of the year award on this. My, my kid was so much fun to read to. There's nobody that would, would not have read to, uh, to Spanky. And oddly enough, was, I'm, I'm sure that I told this story before, but Oddly enough, it was actually reading stories that kind of ended. That was the beginning of the end for for me and Cedar. I was reading, I was reading, uh, I was reading um, to my daughter over the phone, reading her bedtime stories, which was bothering people. Salem's Lot was a really good book. I read Salem's Lot. The movie was also really scary, but it was scarier for Piano Mom. Than it was for anybody else here, huh, Piano Mom? Because that's one of those stories that's a whole hell of a lot scarier if you happen to be from that neck of the woods. Because they filmed it right in the middle of our backyard. And you know what? They filmed it when Piano Mom was there. Because if you were there, or probably, if not, that would be really... You could, you could, have, missed, uh, you could have missed the filming of that, depending on when you got to town. But... That was filmed, and then like two or three years later, four years later, was about the time that um, what's his name got to town. Um, uh, the gentleman, Michael J. Fox, I did know that they were fans of one another. I did not know that Elvis designed a robe for Ali, I did not know that. Um, but that's very, very cool. That is really, really, uh, uh, that is really cool. You know what? So um, Muhammad Ali, toward the end of his life, was talking about, he said if he could if he could have done it all over again, he wished he had had a Harley Davidson. And talked about it a lot. He just said, if I, you know, and we said, just with the wind in your hair, like, you know, what what is it that make you makes you wish you had done the Harley thing? And he said, you know what? It was just the bikes are so iconic. He said it, he didn't, didn't even have a desire necessarily to be a big rider. But because of what they looked like, he just loved looking at them, sitting on them. So the friend who I was working with at the time was a guy named Danny. And <clears throat> Muhammad happened to be in a town where we actually lived. So he was visiting the city we lived in to do signings and everything else. And Danny got everybody in the in the city with a Harley Davidson that I mean, there, there were hundreds of them parked in front of the hotel. And the champ went around and picked out two or three of them. And they all of them were fat boys. And they were all fat boys with different dress on them and turquoise tanks versus white tanks or whatever. And we helped him get on three or four of them. And his photographer, who was his personal photographer for life, took a bunch of pictures of them. And like CGI and all this stuff was really just starting to get legs. But they... They had pictures of Ali sitting on a motorcycle and it looked like he was riding this thing. Like there was, there, the background was blurred. It looked like he was, and he freaked out. He was, uh, he'd never seen anybody happier. Uh, but now we take it for granted. But at the time it was wizardry. You know what I mean? At the time it was wizardry. Like he looked down and thought, that's a picture of me riding a motorcycle. Like, how's that happen? But uh, yeah, I, uh, the thorn birds, that's a commitment. Piano man, you missed that one. It's um, well. Let me tell you a story then about that little town where they filmed that. Uh, when they filmed Ghost Story, uh, one of the uh, actors in that was um, Fred Astaire, and he was at the end of his career. He was uh, quite old. I was quite young, and there was a bank in town. Um, the uh, 
there are two banks in town. One sits over here and one sits here. We were at the uh, the Vermont National, I think was the name of the bank. But that my my parents were banking there, and uh, I was running to go into the bank, but I was turning around to see if uh, my brother had left the car yet as well, and I ran like a little only a little kid can at full speed uh, directly into Fred Astaire, uh, who was wearing a fur coat like the one you've seen me in except it was a lot longer. It went down almost to the ground. But I ran into him at full speed and probably right around head to junk. You know what I mean? Being being a young kid, it was right around that really perfect. But he was such a gentleman about the, about the uh, and of course, Tommy knew where the banks were. That's right. I cased them both already. I'm telling you, that that's a town. You want to talk about a town where you, you could go in there and hit Three of them in about 15 minutes without, I'm kidding. There's like, there's three of them you could just do. But huge police department in the town I'm talking about. Massive police department. There have got to be at least two cops and um, one cruiser. You got to be very, very careful. There's no crime in those parts of the world, man. Are you flexing for your own camera? What are you doing? Dude, my agent is literally flexing in the camera because he's using it like a mirror. I, I wish I could hit a button and pull you up like, like you do because I would have just busted you doing that, man, for real. Uh, Cujo and Christine. Now, I have read almost everything that Stephen King has done. Oddly enough, I did not read Cujo, but I saw the movie Cujo. I read Christine and I saw the movie Christine, uh, the book. As always, I know I sound like everybody that ever was a book snob, but the book is so much better than the movie. It just is. They got so much more room. You know, the the, the exception to the rule of that, honestly, was pretty much uh, the the. Um, thank you, Spanks. The 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 way they did the Lord of the Rings trilogy, they didn't take out much. There was a little bit at the very end of that book. There was a couple of other places that were massaged, but that was basically the whole story. But. What did he take? 10 hours or something to do it? Snot face. Thank you so much, Snot. And I am proud of you. I'm not sure if you've heard this. I'm done being uh, being shy with saying I'm proud of you. Snot, I'm never talking down to anybody. If that's, if that's the way you take it, with all due effect, uh, respect, it's on you. Because I'm not talking down to anybody. I am literally just beaming with pride when I say it. And I'm not sitting on that anymore. So how do you like them apples? Um, oh, would you look at that? Now, in case in case you're looking, this right here, that's the ear. This is a nicely curled up tail. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, look at that. That is a happy animal at all times. I'm telling you, this is the most spoiled cat. And the crazy thing is, even when I do the show, like smacking my hand, making noise, this cat does not care. Uh-oh. Paw clean. She chews to pull the, like the, oh, settling in. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's a happy animal right there. That is a, how happy are you to have back the cat cam? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? The poor cat works so hard. You know what, Ben? There are not enough people. There are not enough people who appreciate the amount of work that this cat puts in. You know what I mean? First of all, the, the, the schedule is hard. You don't know when I'm going live, right? You don't. I could be going live at any moment. You got no idea. Always has to be ready to jump into a basket and fall asleep on demand. I, before you laugh at this, because Calhoun's getting ready. I'm watching him. I know my son. He's, he's loading up for a laugh. Before you laugh at this, do you think that falling asleep on demand is an easy thing to do? I'm not kidding. Like, she's got to get in that basket and go, all right, that's it. I'm out, right? That's not something you can do on demand. I mean, I personally can, but I too am a professional. Don't try this at home. Dennis from Boston. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate you. I mean that. Uh, I'm going to, I don't want to bum out anybody here that's a movie fan, but I'm going to do this anyway, because this is one of those things that absolutely, I, thank you for, uh, for seeing that Lisa from Jersey. Squirrel and Squirrel thanks you as well. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's looked over far too often. In Christine, there is a scene. There is the noise opera. People, never fear my, my boy. Never fear my boy. Every once in a while, might get here a, uh, a moment late. 
every once in a while he might fell under the weather, but he is the lifeboat. Uh, Squirrel is a pro. She's giving the people what they want, truthfully. And we didn't want to have to say this, but since we're all giving her the respect that is due, we actually borrowed the money from Squirrel for the Squirrel Camp. You know what I mean? It was a tough month last month. She kicked in a little bit. Not much, but we had to borrow a little of the squirrel's money to do it, which is all right. We're going to get her back next month on a trip. But this cat is a consummate professional. Uh, it's not easy to do this. It really is not. Uh, so don't try this at home. Don't. This is a uh, this cat is a trained professional. <clears throat> don't try this at home. Right? I think, I think again, Somebody gets it. Squirrels are a, a lockstep. On call, people. 24-7 and always looking gorgeous. Truthfully, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. Nobody spends more time primping than this uh, uh, diva here does. I'm not joking. So the, the routine is so in place. I get up at 3.30. The cat's up at 3.30, ready to roll, right? And then she plays this really stupid game where she gets somewhere where I can't see her. And she meows at the top of her lungs until she can see me, at which point she drops the meow three octaves. So she goes from that panicky meow to the kind of meow and then chases me back into the room. I'll play with her for a little bit and then I start going to get ready for, to do the lifeboat or whatever I'm doing. And then she will run out of the room and go hide and do the exact same game with the meowing thing. This is how I spend the first hour of every day. I'm not kidding. But... When I start doing my yoga, like when I stop playing and she knows like I'm doing something, I sit down, I start getting into poses. At that point, she will spend the next hour making sure that she looks perfect, cleaning herself, getting herself all done, the face, all that, knowing it's time. Uh, my earlier show, I held up the basket and said, you notice, no cat here, right? You will see her as soon as I start talking. I mean, I... I I started, it takes about a minute. This cat is a professional. You, you saw the picture that I used for this video, right? That's what happens when the basket is not on the table, right? Good to see you, Nick. Love you, brother. When the basket's not on the table, Squirrel's like, okay, so the boss blew it. I'll just jump up on his shoulder and sit here because obviously the show's about me. If the basket's not there, I'll just, I'll just take matters into my own hands. And she's done it. I'm not sure if she's done it every time I have filmed out of this room, but she's certainly done it probably 75% of the time. She'll just hop up on a shoulder and park it there. She realizes she's part of this. She also knows that she's being talked about as we speak. I'm not kidding. I know you think I am, but I'm not. Her ears are straight up. They're not in the normal position. She knows that right now she's being discussed. She's a bit of a narcissist. Sorry, but she is. Just a little bit. Don't shake your head, Calhoun. Don't judge me. I live with this cat. Don't judge me. He's judging me, people. He is. He's doing this number like he, once again, like he's shaking off a pitch. Oh, you're listening to heavy metal? That's the only other excuse I can take because that's what you look like. You look like you're head banging. Ah, there you go. It's exactly what he's doing. He's listening to heavy metal. <laughs> now I know. I get it. Um. Lifeboat Spanks, I sent you a message on Discord. Apparently, someone's dropping the ball. Thank you. I needed you to do that so that I could uh, give it to him from here. See that? That was a long distance. Cat Kansas likes the cat cam. Or I could pop up on Johnny's shirt modeling some cool shirts. That is a great shirt, people. That really is a great shirt. If you didn't see the shirt that uh, she's talking about, head over and watch my brother's last, uh, or maybe it's the video before the last video. It's the controversial one. You know what? I got, what do I got left? Seven minutes? Hey, Calhoun, you want to see one from the I don't care file? Oh, I get the thumbs up. You know what? You need Calhoun for the thumbs up. I could have gotten this one. Dad, don't do it. Dad, don't do it. I got the what's up. My brother is a gentleman. He really is. Johnny Scoville is a gentleman, to, to be sure. I tried that hot sauce. If you do not watch Chase the Heat, then you probably didn't see me try that hot sauce. I'm the punchline on the hot sauce day. You understand? I, ha I have a tolerance. I'm not being cool, but I have a tolerance that would probably bury most of you, right? But I don't have a tolerance that gets me in the same room as my brother. It's not even close. So when he said, 
hey, man, this is the Pepper X sauce. I went out to do that video so that you guys could enjoy me getting burned. That's what we do. That's our shtick, as he puts it. Or you do know what he said was, and then you go out and you do that thing where you complain, you know, like you're, like you're burning really. I'm like, dude, I am burning really bad. Like the complaint is legit. I hate it. It hurts. But I didn't complain that day. I didn't. And I should have. Two million Scoville units? People, I should have been capsaicin cramps on the floor. My brother is a gentleman. And he has said, you know, I don't have any beef with this guy. It just happens to be one of those things where the uh, sauce is not as hot as they claim it is. Right? I respect that. Um, he, he really is. Yeah, normally I'm the straight man. That's right. This time I'm going to go the other direction because I'll tell you something. Um, you, you, don't, you don't put out a, a sauce that you say is two million that you don't know is two million. Right? You don't put that on a bottle. You don't say it's, something's going to be this hot, right? That that sauce is about as hot as a habanero. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know that that's, I mean, I, I expect it to be floored, right? I, I, unlike most people, have actually been popped with something that really is 2 million Scoville units, right? Like you, people write that stuff on hot sauce bottles all the time. There are tinctures that, I mean, you're, you're doing, you're getting it. And Two drops on your tongue out of an eyedropper will fold you in half and make you sweat and look like like the world's about to end from capsaicin cramps. I boy, I tried that sauce. I didn't get any of that. And my brother said, you know, you know, people make mistakes. I don't think that was a mistake. But that's me over here. You know what I mean? Johnny Scoble really is a better person than I am. Make no mistake. I just watched the video of you doing the Sprite banana thing. Laugh my butt off. Need to watch <laughs> the do over now. You know what? If you've not, people, if you've not watched the stupid stuff that my brother and I do, like eating Sistroming, which is the world's smelliest food, but but that wouldn't have been good enough. So we left it in the Sonoran Desert for three weeks. I'm not joking. In the sun. Yeah. And then ate it or, or drank. <laughs> we then consumed it. If you've never seen some of the disgusting challenges we do, you say, why do you do that? We do it because it gets a lot of attention online. And you know what? If you show up to see me eat fish or you show up to see me vomit milk out of my nose or you see me do any of the other stupid things, you're going to hear why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing it to draw attention because I want people to hear about the fact that you don't have to go through life uh, addicted to anything. You know, you're uh, you're not the 5,000th person to say that, Shannon Smith. As it turns out, I happen to have a real talent for this. Um, it, it's a noise that people seem to really enjoy. Christian Johansson Meyer. Hello, everyone. I'm on a friend's devices. Well, it's a, I love the uh, I love the thumbnail. Always been a huge fan of. Uh, yeah, of. Uh, the one, the only. Thank God, the only. Thank you, Jen Marie. It's not so much to, it's it's the gag sound, I think, that congratulations. 78 days clean. That is awesome. That is awesome. It really is. 78 days clean. That is epic. That is good stuff. That is worth all kinds of congratulations. I love that. It is Gary Busey. Yes, it is Gary Busey, at least in the photo. But absolutely love it. Hello, Cricket. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Yes, Squirrel is back, right? Little diva. How are you? I can I can molest Squirrel like this while she sleeps, and usually it does absolutely nothing. But you, you you're yes, I was about to say, but you're cat lovers, so you know that if you catch your cat while your cat is perfectly relaxed, and then you touch them the wrong way for whatever reason, it's like instantly they go, "Oh, you you pet me now, I have to lick everywhere you just touched me because you're annoying." Oh, and that's the look. Can you see that look? Check this out. Oh, he's a good kitty. Huh? That is a handsome, handsome cat. Aren't you a pretty girl? And spoiled like the day is long. Sorry. This is uh, absolutely the highlight of my day. Sorry, but this, this animal right here is... The highlight of my day. Eat a good kitty. She knows the uh, she knows the new camera's on, right? She's ready for her close up. 
Look at that. Tell me she doesn't know. Ready? 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 There you go. Right in the camera. Oh, I get it. Yeah, really a spoiled animal. The the one hundred year old egg was horrendous. I will admit that. Ear scratches uh, for feline world to be to be sure to be sure, and you'll notice that um, her feet, she has a tan and a black, in, in the in the back and kind of the same kind of setup in the front. Although in the back it is absolutely jet black on one, and uh, and light brown on the other. Yeah, someone is a very spoiled kitty. She only gets this for about seven hours a day, though, which is what bothers her. You know, prior to the lifeboat, this was what Squirrel did from the time she got up in the morning until the time she went to bed. But when the lifeboat started really picking up, now she has to work really hard and she's not she's not happy about it. But make no mistake, this is the hardest working cat on YouTube. Seriously, you're going to tell me that anywhere on YouTube you've seen more cat in a basket? Because you haven't. Every once in a while, someone will say it. You haven't. Squirrel leads the uh, the big red button in cat and on basket. There are hundreds of hours of uh, this cat. Um, so the question was, I saw I saw someone ask a question. What was it? It was, of course I'm a cat guy. Of course I'm a cat guy. Question, Tommy, a UW professor did a talk on drugs yesterday and gave you a thumbs up. <laughs> Who did what? Somebody at the University of Washington did a talk on drugs yesterday and gave me a thumbs up. Well, I'll be damned. That's an honor. That is a very, very cool thing to hear. Um, wow, what a cool thing to hear. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I've been... Uh, I, there have been a lot of honors lately. There's been a lot. I've, I've had a couple of people reach out recently that just uh, I was. Uh, it's a it's an odd thing that we do here on this uh, on this channel. You end up seeing people that you really respect who then reach out and say things, and you go, "Damn, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing." By the way, you want to hear something to me that's really really exciting, and it might not be as exciting to you, but um, hold on, Tommy. Uh, Jean Marie did a live earlier that is triggering but very necessary. We are asking for those with a voice to join ours and hers. Here's the link. Everybody see that? Here's the deal. Awaken doesn't ask uh, us to do things like that very often. So um, you can't obviously click on it now that it's up, but where she has it there, you can click on it. Thank you. Um, I put a lot of, a lot of faith in the, uh, um, yeah, that's um, I may not I may not do that for everyone. I would definitely do that for her. I have a lot of faith in her. Really, I do. Uh, yes, spoiled animal. I think is the takeaway. We are people absolutely back in the cat cam, and since she's so patient, we'll give we'll give her the the loaf. He's a good cat. All right, people. I am Captain Tommy Scoble. Guess what? I'm not lifting up this cat. There's no need. This right here is a cat in a basket. Calhounas, what are you doing? Other than looking like Axl Rose, what else is going on in your life? Oh, look at that. See that? Spanky said, there he is. Yes, I got to make room for me. You got to make room for uh, a hairdresser. You know, get a little oh, long. The, uh... Yeah, it's going to get longer. I'll tell you what. I know I don't have any issue with it. I have no issue with it at all. I'm a little salty that you stole the gray hat back. But other than that... Um, you have like the same exact hat. And you well, want to no, wear this mine? This this one's brown. See, look at that. There it is. Looks Stolen way better chapeau. on me. Oh, you're just, you're just asking for trouble there, youngster. My audience, is, uh, my audience knows better than to... Uh, yeah. It's pronounced deer tay. Come on, bro. Come on. I don't know. I'm I don't sorry. know about that. I love the I love the uh, the deer tank. Spanky, our Viking king. Well, you know what? You should probably leave on that note, Calhoun. I don't think it's going to get a lot better than that. If I were you, 
It's okay, uh, Misha. It's okay. No one is. Uh, no one thinks you're ignoring them. We know who you are. Jen Reese says that. Spanx looks fine. Yeah, that's a much better angle. I don't know about about you, but I don't are you look to the so sleepy. No, my uh, my cam was at a weird angle. Now I'm now well, I'm good. Well, no more weird angles. All right, people. That's the news. I will see all of you tomorrow. That is a cat in a basket. That's my son. I'm Captain Tommy. We'll see you on the next one. God bless and I love you all. And I mean that.